On this episode of Rowdy Rowley's Sports Review, you'll hear from my buddy Will Compton. Not only is Will a pro linebacker, but he also has his own podcast. Welcome to the Rowdy Riley Sports Review. My name is Rowdy Riley. Let's get rowdy! Will, thank you so much for coming on. Dude, it's a pleasure. What was the catalyst behind Bussin' with the Boys? Well, I, um, it, was a, it was an idea I, I had thought, thought about since uh, I played with Washington. I'd always loved listening to podcasts. Joe Rogan, like everybody knows. Being Greenfield, he was a performance podcast, comedy podcast. I just always loved the idea of, uh, of having my own podcast one day. Uh, no NFL players at the time had their own podcasts, and I always thought it'd be cool to get all the conversations we have in the locker room, in the saunas, in the cold tubs, behind a mic. So when I was kind of working on the idea, my best friend Taylor Luan, who I also do with, shout out the boy. Um, no free shout outs. Yeah, no free shout outs, that's right. <laughs> And uh, he said he wanted to do it with me. And he kind of found the bus, and we kind of put this whole brainchild together. But uh, that's how Buzzing with the Boys started. How did you decide that Taylor Lewan was the perfect co-host? Man, when I got to uh, the Titans in 2018, and we were going through OTAs, uh, Taylor and I actually, um, we were sitting at breakfast one day. And that's how we started to kind of get to know each other. And we actually, it was funny because we actually bonded and was talking about a Joe Rogan podcast. He's like, oh, if you love podcasts, you need to listen to this one on Joe Rogan, this episode, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we started to get to know each other on podcasting, believe it or not. But one day when I was traveling from Nashville back home uh, to my hometown in Missouri, I was listening to this Joe Rogan episode that he, he put me on. I was kind of texting back and forth with him. But we just kind of bonded over over that. You get to know Taylor. He's got a, a big personality right away. And we kind of became close friends like right out of the gate. He, uh, al he always jokes and tells a story how he married his wife in like five weeks. We kind of became best friends very quickly. It's just kind of given with his personality. But uh, yeah, man, w when I was kind of coming up with the idea of the podcast and everything, I mean, he was... He was my boy throughout the season, throughout the year, and he, him along with many others, my fiance, other friends, people saying, hey, you should start your own podcast and stuff. He was somebody being like, hey, put this thing together. And then one day he was like, hey, I'll do it with you because I had asked him, like, would you like to do it with me? It'd make it a lot easier if you did it with me. And um, so when he agreed to that, it was kind of, that's when we started putting it all together. Were there any of your other teammates that were interested in co-hosting? I, you know, I didn't really think at the time that um, I was going to have a co-host because, again, I was listening to these podcasts that kind of like ran. It was kind of their own individual self, Joe Rogan, Ben Greenfield. They're kind of having their own interviews. And so I didn't necessarily think about asking anybody at first. And it wasn't like I didn't want to ask anybody. I just didn't know if anybody would want to do the whole podcast thing with me. And I remember driving. It was December. I was driving to do this radio show for the Titans. And um, I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go after it. I think I'm going to do the podcast. I think I'm going to, you know, create this thing. At first, it was going to be called the, the Wolf Den. It was just myself because I'm fascinated with wolves. And um, I was on the phone with Taylor. He's like, yo, I'll do it with you. If that'll, if, you know, if that'll, if that'll set you at ease with deciding to do it or not. And I was like, yo, I'd be on board if you did it with me 100%. And before he left for, for the offseason, I was like, hey, are you 100% going to do this? Because if not, I'm going to get rolling on this right now in January when the season ended. And um, I was like, but if you would do, if you're gonna do it with me, I'll wait until you get back in April, and that's how we'll kind of start putting everything together. He's like, bro, if you wait, I will, I will 100% do this with you. And so I, I waited, and it made it a lot better doing it with a, with your best friend, other than doing it on your own. Uh, but yeah, that's how I kind of decided on Taylor. It wasn't like I held tryouts and decided who's gonna be the co-host with me. It was kind of like, yo, my boy wanted to do it with me, so I was gonna wait and do it with him. Uh, I understand that Bussing with the Boys is affiliated with Barstool. How has that affected the podcast? Has it blown that up into the stratosphere? Yeah, joining Barstool has definitely helped us. They, uh, you know, they they definitely know what's going on in the media world. In that, I don't necessarily want to say influencer world, but just media as a whole, allowing you to have free form podcasts. Uh, all these shows that talk about whatever they want to do, they kind of pour gasoline on the creator. They allow the creator to kind of be in control of what they want to do. 
And when Barstool reached out to us, it was kind of the conversation. Erica Nardini called the CEO of Barstool Sports. She's an absolute stud. Um, but she was like, we don't want to change anything you guys do. We just want to pour gasoline on it. We want to help you guys get to where you want to go. Um, and so we partnered up with Barstool. And they, they've definitely um, you know, they've definitely gotten us out there a lot more. They've thrown a lot of uh, gasoline on the fire. They've kind of you know, pushed us along and helped us in whatever avenue we needed. Our, our biggest thing was we needed infrastructure help. So all the resources that they have, they've, you know, they've allowed us to use them, you know, as much as we've needed. Um, and so there's always those conversations where it's, hey, what do you guys need from us? How can we help you? How can we do this for you? Um, what ideas do you have? How can we hit, how can we help facilitate these ideas that are in your head and make them, make them real and help push you guys along even farther? So Barstool's been tremendous in our growth and we, we enjoy working with them a lot. Is it hard for you to balance the podcast and practice at the same time? It definitely has its challenges. It definitely has its challenges. It's uh, you know, you gotta you gotta be able to compartmentalize everything. You know, priority number one has always been football. So learning how to understand and balance that as you play, um, it hasn't necessarily been a challenge juggling both. The challenge comes from being the first active player podcast, and with that comes pushback at times, especially when you're not playing well. When your team loses, there's a lot of focus on football, focus on this. Uh, you know, you kind of you put yourself out there in the public eye a lot more, and people take a liking to it. People have you know negative responses to it sometimes. So that has been more so the biggest challenge is, is continuing the show and push that you know you you have the priority, which is football, and then also having the side hustle on the side, which is busting with the boys. Um, but it's you know it's it's something that's new. People see. Aaron Rodgers and Pat Mahomes and all these all these guys doing commercials on the side and getting the limelight and doing things off the field that has helped propel them. You have guys that have, do a lot of charity work. Guys that do their own thing off the field. Ours is just podcasting, which is new to a lot of people. So with that comes, you know, some backlash at times, like I told you when we lose games. But um, it definitely has its challenges. But I, I feel like I compartmentalize it well. I understand how to uh, prioritize football. Taylor, with a guy like Taylor, who's a face of a franchise, and um, who's very big in the football world, one of the best left tackles in the game. My only thing to him was, hey, just show up. Like, I'll do everything else. I understand that he lives in kind of a different world than I do when it comes to being one of the faces uh, of a franchise. So uh, we do a good job juggling it. You know, I, I, I carry some of the load, not in a, in a way to brag that I carry some of the load, but I understand what comes with having somebody like Taylor on the podcast as well, because we do. We run, we're homegrown and home operated. We run off a generator in the hot spot, and we do a lot of the stuff on our own. So uh, it's been fun. It's kind of fun living in that entrepreneurial space. Which one of your teammates really, really wants to be on the podcast, but you know they absolutely cannot be? <laughs> oh, man. Because I know you've had Delaney Walker, DH2K, Coach Frapel. Yo, I love the uh, DH2K nickname. That's a good, <laughs> hey, Derek, that's a good DH2K. I like that. But you're saying I've had them on. Who who wants to be on, but they absolutely cannot be on? Yes. Um, that's a good question. I don't. I don't know because I do ultimately want all of my teammates on. the 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 problem with us is, you only, we do one episode a week, so you only have 52 shots a year, right? And we want to do. We don't want to pigeonhole ourselves into a Titans only podcast. We don't want to pigeonhole ourselves into a football only podcast because again, you're able to have all these great conversations off the field pertaining to business and in all these inter industries that guys, you know, have uh, take a liking to, right? Taylor and I, we love to talk with, with people outside of our locker room. So with that, you have to be choosy at times on who you, who you have on. It doesn't mean that guys can't be on it. It's just you're in such a growing phase right now until you're able to establish yourself to where you can have two or three podcasts a week to where we're done playing football. I'll be done sooner than Taylor is at playing football. But until I'm able to handle that type of load, you do got to be choosy on who you're going to have on. Ultimately, we want to have everybody on. We want to have all of our teammates on. Uh, fortunately, I haven't had to face like a, a conversation where it's like, hey, you can't come on. But somebody who wants to be on badly, he isn't a teammate, but he's in the building, but Jeb. Our guy, Jeb, he wants us to come to his restaurant all the time. He, ha he haggles us about coming on the podcast. But, Jeb, you are not allowed on Bustin' with the Boys, and I will always ha have th hold that over your head until the time is right. But uh, he always wants us to come to his restaurant, bust each other's balls yeah. about it. 
Uh, but I would say Jeb. I would say if somebody who wants to come on, they don't say they want to come on, but you know they want to come on, it's Jeb. Why did you choose football over other sports? I played uh, I, I played all the sports growing up, man. I, I probably um, honed in on football in high school. That's uh, you know I did track, I did baseball growing up, wrestling growing up. I did basketball a couple years. I wasn't necessarily a basketball player, but uh, you know I did all of it. Baseball, I was a bit avid baseball player growing up, but I started to kind of hone in and focus on football probably starting my sophomore year of high school. Um, Fortunately, looking back, it was the it was the right decision. But uh, I definitely miss playing baseball, playing all those other sports. But I'm a big believer that you, everybody needs to get out and do everything growing up, and not you know kind of have have all your focus on one sport. I know parents and kids like to focus on one sport from a young age now in the era that we're in. Uh, but uh, yeah, I played, I did it all growing up, man. I love doing it all. In doing my research, I've saw that on Christmas Eve of 2020 you tweeted a photo of your of a of a haircut and AJ Brown said in an interview that you should cut it all off and restart did you lose a bet <laughs> no so the inspiration came from a show called Peaky Blinders I don't know if you've watched it it's a great show on Netflix but um, I watched it last year when we were quarantined and like, I want to say it was like April when we were quarantined and stuck in the house. Uh, we were binge watching all the TV shows and I absolutely loved Peaky Blinders. They have their suits, they have these haircuts, they have these Peaky Blinder hats. And um, I texted the guy, uh, Stitch It, who I go through with my suits. Shout out Stitch It, no free shout out Stitch It. Um, but this spot in Nashville who makes a, a lot of, lot of our, our players suits. And I was like, yo, I need a Peaky Blinder suit. Like a, like a one that's got the, the cloth material, it's got the works. Like I wanna make a classic Peaky Blinder suit. And um, you know, I, the game that I was gonna do it was the Green Bay game. And I wanted to go full character. I couldn't just do, I couldn't just do the suit and then talk about Peaky Blinders without having the haircut. They all have these certain haircuts. And so I went into the barber shop and I, I you know, I, I knew, I didn't know it was gonna do what it did. But I knew it was gonna be I knew it was going to be a little bit of a grind getting to travel day uh, because the barbershop was closed on Christmas Eve and Christmas. So it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday, the, December 23rd. I knew I was going to have to go in and get this haircut. And I knew I was going to have to weather the storm a little bit going in front of the guys in the next couple of days until I got to wear the suit and they understood where it was all coming from. Uh, so I got this haircut that you saw. And the dude cuts, dude cuts my hair, and I was like, "Give me a razor, give me a razor blade all the way around, and just leave, leave the top like the Peaky Blinders." I'm showing him photos, and he does his cut, spins me around, and I look at the haircut, and um, he's like, "What else do you want me to do, dude? Do you want me to blend it? Do you want me to make it look better than what it is?" And I'm kind of just grinning. I'm like, "Man, this looks absolutely ridiculous. Like, I love it. We're keeping it here." And he's like. Listen, I can blend it. Like I can make it look better than what it looks right now. I was like, no. I was like, uh, this is this is it. But I didn't know it was gonna do what it did. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't know it was gonna get on ESPN. I just knew like the boys are gonna bust my balls for this one. Like I, I can't wait to have this haircut. So I get the haircut going the next day. Everybody's just destroying me. All the jokes, er laughs everywhere. Some guys who would watch Peaky Blinders were like, hey, comp, that's awesome. Blah blah blah. And I had to make it, this was like a Wednesday, and then that's when Christmas Eve had happened and all that stuff. I had to make it until Saturday. I was like, guys, just wait until Saturday. I'm going to have the hat. I'm going to have the works. But then I got to Saturday, and I got to put on the suit, and everybody's like, okay, you look way better now. Your haircut makes more sense now. I get it. Uh, but people thought, like, I was actually doing the haircut thinking it's like a good-looking haircut. Like, I knew it looked ridiculous, but uh, we had a lot of fun with it. But that's where it came from, Peaky Blinders. Have you ever been on the receiving end of a... DH2K stiff arm. Fortunately, I have not. I, I, I've been I've I've been lucky enough to make it out on the other side of not getting stiff armed by uh, uh, DH2K, as you coined him with that nickname. Um, no, when I was on the Raiders, we played against them, but fortunately, I wasn't out in the open field to where it was it was you know the chance of getting stiff armed by Derek. But uh, not in practice. I haven't had to. 
Um, he's a little different in practice. I mean, you're not trying to take out your own teammates like you are out, like he does out there on the football field. But uh, no, no, no stiff arms from from DH2K. If you could, what advice would you go back and give yourself at Nebraska? That's a good question. Um, you know, I think when I was at Nebraska, I took football and stuff way too seriously. I was very disciplined. Now, I, I do think my discipline and hard work from Nebraska and learning all that got me to where I am today. Uh, but knowing how I am now, I, I would tell young comp to not take life so serious. Like, enjoy it a little bit more with the boys. Um, not that I didn't enjoy it. I was my goofy self and everything like that. But I was like very much in the mold and identified with being a football player. So if I go back and tell a young comp anything, it was don't identify with you know just football and it's the end all be all because I put a lot of stress and I put a lot of pressure on myself to where if I, I feel like if I wouldn't have put all that on myself, I might have played better. You know what I mean? Um, and maybe not. Maybe maybe it's all worked out how it's supposed to work out. But if I could go back, it would, it would be don't identify so much and put so much pressure and stress on yourself that you lose perspective on that you're playing at, at Nebraska and you're, you're, you're living this life that not a lot of people get to live. So that would, that would be my advice to young comp. Where can people listen to Bussin' with the Boys? Everywhere, man. Wherever you, wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it's on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, wherever, Bussin' with the Boys is on it. We're also on YouTube, Bussin' with the Boys. Uh, we have a YouTube channel growing right now and, um, you know, you're able to kind of watch the show. You don't need your phone to look up the references that we're referring to. Our produ- our producers and production crew does a great job of plugging all that stuff in. So you're able to seamlessly watch and experience uh, Bussin' with the boys. Um, we're also on uh, social media channels, Bussin' WTB. I appreciate you letting me have that plug there. Speaking of social media, actually, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Rowdy Riley SR. My name is Will Compton, and I just participated on Rowdy Riley Sports Review. We are on the avenue. This show is definitely for the boys. They made us a nice little. They made us a nice little picture that will live right on the bus. Go follow the boys everywhere. Go subscribe. They're definitely for the boys. Riley, thank you so much for having me on, boss. This was a blast. Thank you.